Hey mamas, today we're gonna to be doing a front pocket diaper. So similar to the leading edge back pocket, this time the pocket's just gonna be in the front. And then there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. You can really use any pocket style and have it be in the front. But since the front isn't elasticized, a few work better than others. One way you can do it is have your pattern template cut out and then cut an extra strip to go on the inside of the front. Another way is just to have whatever your inner is. This time I'm using um, the Alova suede cloth, which is like what Cotton Babies uses. And for that, you could just have an extra strip of that as well. It would be kind of like those rear edge ones, but I like using the pull. And one thing that I'm gonna try today that I've seen done and I haven't done before is to extend the single piece of pull up about an inch and three quarters beyond the actual pattern edge. And then I'm going to sew in just a little edge on that, just to make it nice and finished. And because it's pull and alova, you don't really need to sew the edge, but if you want it to be a little more durable and a little nicer there. And then when you assemble it, you're gonna just put that down first and then the suede cloth on top so that in the end, the pull ends up being over the suede cloth. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've got my polyester thread and my Microtex Sharp 7010 needle. And I'm gonna use a fairly large gauge, like or a fairly large stitch length, like a three, um, just to do my finishing here. And I'm just gonna go and fold over the edges of both the top of the suede cloth and the top of the pole just a little bit. For the suede cloth piece, you'll wanna cut it down about a half an inch beyond the pattern so that it doesn't end up sewn into your seam allowance. So you fold over your top here, just a little bit. I think I've got it about a quarter of an inch. And then you just sew it down. Just a nice little straight stitch across the top, just for like a nice little finished smooth edge. So we've got this little front seam on our pull sewn. And we're gonna do the same thing to the front of the suede cloth. Now we have the little front of the suede cloth folded down and sewn. We have the front of the pull folded down and sewn. And the next thing we're gonna do is put them faces up or faces toward each other. And I like to, with suede cloth, you don't really need to worry about too much because it doesn't stretch. But if you were using a stretchier material, material, you could do like you did with the, with the micro fleece and you could glue stick it down just a tiny bit on the edges or you can clip it. And for this, I like to look at my snap placement or my applic placement and then put like at least a half an inch above that or you can use your pattern if you're using, if, if you're using a pattern and just kind of guide your fabrics down beyond that just to make sure that you have enough space if you're doing it with this fold over method. Now, if you're doing it with the two pieces method, you don't need to worry about estimating because it will be exactly lined up because your two pieces will have been assembled first. But for the fold over method, you just kind of line them up like that. And then when you do your top stitching, it's out of the way of your snaps and also not gonna accidentally stitch over the top of your in inner fabric. So make sure that it's enough over. And then I'm gonna take my clips. I'm gonna clip that right there. Make sure everything's lined up. So now I've got it all clipped and ready to sew. And because I've got the folded over front edge instead of the sewn on front edge, I'm just gonna sew around all the way around the sides and back to the front again. If you had it with pieced pieces, then you would just sew all the way around the whole thing because you would just be turning through the pocket opening.
I'm just cleaning up both sides to make sure they line up with the curve of the pattern. If you're using a square front pattern, then it would not matter, but mine has a curve inward at the front, so I'm just lining it up with that. And since I've never done this fold over kind before, it might not be perfect, but you know, it's the general idea. The same rules apply if you're doing it pieced. I've got, I'll link the tutorial to how I have it pieced on my blog, but this is just me trying something new, so I'm not always doing the exact same things. I'm pretty sure this is how Fuzzy Buns did their, even though they were a leading edge pocket and they're the one that owns the patent to the leading edge pocket, they did their fronts with the fold over pull and I wanted to try that. Okay, so at this point, you've got everything sewn up and you can trim it in a little bit if you need to have any spots that are too thick, but this all looks fine. And then you're gonna turn it through your pocket opening. So you've got your pocket opening right there and you're just gonna turn your whole diaper through it. And you can go across that when you top stitch to lay that nice and crisp. But right now, here's your general diaper shape. And then at this point, we're just gonna do our seam for our elastic casings. And then feed and sew in our elastics. And they're all gonna be done through the turning hole. So that's what it looks like before you do your elastic casings. When you're sewing your elastic casings with pull, it helps to sew on the inside edge so that you can see your pull and make sure that you're pulling your pull a little bit outside of your suede cloth or your micro fleece or your wicking peak, just so that your inner's not gonna wick onto their clothing. When you're working around a curve, it can be helpful to clip. Now we're just gonna feed our elastic through our pocket opening, through our turning hole. And we're gonna push it toward the pull side, just like with the other pocket diaper. I'm gonna run it between the turned edge and the pull at the top, which makes it a little sticky sometimes. Just go slow. I kind of angle it outward so that it's less likely to get caught and get a twisted looking elastic and then once you get it all the way through you can press it flat and this is a pretty sticky pull compared to the babyville pull so it's, it's gonna snag a little bit So now we've got our elastics installed. I had to take a little break because my bobbin housing was full of lint, probably from sewing so many pre-fitteds. Um, kept on bending my needles. So when I went through two, two needles, I decided, hey, maybe I should go and investigate the problem. <laughs> and it was a big, big clog of lint. So there we go. When in doubt, check your bobbin casing. So there's your elastics installed both sides. Now we're going to do our top stitching. And when we top stitch around the front, we're going to do it just like usual so that this lays flat. We're just going to go very close to the edge all the way from one elastic 
around the front into the other elastic, and then each of the wings, and then we'll install our wing snaps since this is a snapping diaper. So there's your front all nice and flat. And now I'm going to do the back wings. It's all top stitched and if you had velcro diapers you would add on the tabs now but since I'm doing snaps I'm going to add on my snaps. There's your teeny tiny newborn to small front envelope pocket diaper. Happy sewing. <laughs>